Hey guys, so in this video we're going to improve upon the uh, the little Python script we wrote in the last video. Um, if you recall in the last video we basically created a, um, a GUI window. Uh, here it is right here with just the simple push button in the, set, uh, in the top left corner. Uh, it defaults to the top left corner just because we didn't set. Um, any layout options or anything. Um, in this video we're planning on showing you guys how to uh, align this button as well as connect this button uh, to a function um, so that we can actually have it do something. Um, and in this case I'm just going to add in uh, a label below the button uh, so we can Upon the clicking of the button, we can change the uh, the text and the label. So let's get started. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do, uh, just to create the label, is create a new variable, we'll call it my label, uh, and we're going to make it a Q label. Um, so for now, we can just write like I'm a label. Just to be clever, um, and then so I can show you guys if we just run this right now, they will have layered themselves, um, which isn't exactly what we want. So first things first, we're going to create a layout. Um, so we'll just call it like main layout. Uh, we're going to make it a V box layout. Um, so PyQt has uh, among other layout widgets, it has the VBox layout and the QHbox layout. Um, and they're pretty simple. The VBox layout is going to allow you to uh, add widgets to it. Um, and it'll keep them aligned, basically vertically. So if you do uh, VBox layout dot add widget, in this case we'll add the button first and add the label second, it'll simply align them with the button above the label. And I'll show you that now. So, layout, yep. And then we're going to want to set, um, provide the actual instance of our class here as the only parameter to the, uh, the constructor. And as we do this, we also need to remove um, the variables we passed in the widgets earlier because they can only have a single parent and we're going to be setting their parent equal to the uh, the main layout. So got those there, we have the main layout. Now if we add, uh, call main layout dot add widget, um, add the button in there, main layout dot add widget, add the label. Uh, I can show you here, they should be aligned vertically. Yeah, um, and this isn't exactly what we want. Normally you'd want to ha <clears throat> have like a buffer on both sides so that the button's actually centered. Um, so we can do that basically by using the other uh, box layout, uh, the QH box layout, and creating a uh, layout item for the button and a layout item for the label, and then putting buffers on both of those sides, and then just pushing those two layouts into the VBox layout. So I'll show you how to do that now. So we want to do uh, button layout equals QH box layout, um, and we don't want to pass um, any parameters here because we're going to be setting the parent of this equal to main layout. So we don't need to reinitialize that, uh, and then label layout equal to the same thing here. Um, and then the way you add the buffers on the uh, left and right side of um, the actual button label is we're going to do call uh, button layout dot add uh, stretch. Um, so they have stretch. Uh, you can this is one of the functions. Also, you can call add spacing, uh, which would be like 
this, and then you have to provide uh, pixel spacing size. Um, and then that's done for you in Add Stretch, basically. Um, it just uses the minimum size of the uh, the button and adds to get that along with uh, the actual size you have for the layout. So in this case, the row size that we're going to have, the horizontal size, and then just divides that by two and then just uses the extra size as the uh, the size of the stretch. But uh, So we're <clears throat> going to do that, and then we're going to have to add the actual widget. So add my button to that, um, and then we'll add another stretch on the right side. And then we'll do the same for uh, the label layout. Let's just change all those there. And then my label. Okay. And then we can get rid of, not leave those there for now, but we're going to be changing it to add uh, layout. So we're going to be adding the button layout and then the label layout and get rid of these. And now both the button and the label should be aligned uh, in the center of the window. <laughs> yeah, here we go. So if we wanted to uh, make it a little bit nicer even, we can add um, a stretch above the button and say maybe, like I was talking about earlier, add a spacing of like 25 pixels between the two and then add a stretch below. And this should be a little bit nicer. Yeah, okay, there we go. And then uh, you can still uh, change the actual window size. Um, in a later video I'll talk more about that. But uh, now we're going to connect the actual button um, to a function so that we can uh, change the uh, value that's inside of the label. So what we're going to want to do is, well first of all actually we're going to want to, uh, actually I'll do that later. So down at the bottom here let's do my button dot clicked. So this is going to be activated every single time the button's clicked um, dot connect and then we can pass pretty much anything to this um, that's a method uh, be it inside this class or inside any other class that we have a handle to um, or any other uh, function uh, global function so we'll just do um, function inside this class and we'll do uh, button clicked so now this will make a function called uh, button clicked and pass in the uh, instance of the class here. And remember this is going to be called every single time the button's clicked. So what do we want to do when the button's clicked? We want it to change the label. Um, so what we have to do first, we can't just call my label. Normally what we would do is we call my label dot um, set text because we want to change the text inside of it. And we'll just do something like button clicked. Um, but this actually isn't going to work right now because this my label is not uh, a global variable and it's not a variable that's um, global inside of the it's not a member variable of the class either um, so what we're going to have to do is change it to a, be a member variable so if we just add self in front of all of the instances of label so this is where we're initializing it um, we also refer to it here so we're going to have to change it there um, now we should be able to uh, actually call anything of this variable from uh, from a different function. So let's test this out. Okay, so it should change to, yep, button clicked. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, uh, subscribe to my channel. Probably be Future videos on this uh, playlist will probably be more complex uh, aspects of PyQt, um, stuff like threading, uh, having a, thre a background thread controlling a uh, certain aspects of the GUI. Um, might actually do a 
shorter playlist on ma creating this game that I've uh, created that's pretty simple. Um, but it actually uses a lot of different uh, aspects of PyQt4, so it'll probably be a good learning tool. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.